Hey guys, I am CMA Super, and welcome to another episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. So, uh, last episode we fought the dragon and defeated him in six minutes. And this episode we have 74 levels that we need to spend, so let's go spend them on something. In fact, I actually know what we're going to spend them on already. These four things. So it's going to be 30 on the diamond sword, 30 on a diamond pickaxe, and whatever's left on the two iron helmets because they're full health and... We got them from the stronghold, and why not spend some levels on them? There's really no harm. So, diamond sword first. We'll just go with this one. That's pretty good. Sharpness 4, knockback 2, fire aspect 2 is better than what I'm currently using, which is sharpness 3, knockback 2. This one's sharpness 4, knockback 2, and then it adds on fire aspect. So that's actually a really good sword. So let's go with the diamond pickaxe now. Efficiency 4 on breaking 3 is perfect. I needed an, I needed another one of those. After this one, I have no more. <laughs> so, yeah. That's perfect. Now we have 14 levels left, so I want 7 each. Um, I know I can get 7, but it's a matter of how lucky can I get. Protection 1 for 7 levels is not worth it at all. <laughs> oh well. We're putting seven levels in this. Seven levels is actually a risk because if it's under like ten, I think. Um, oops. Uh, if it's under ten, then you're more likely to get a level one equivalent. So if you were going to do like level seven or something, you might as well just do level one. But I'm going to do level seven just because I can. Blast protection one, aqua affinity one. Okay. Uh, which one should I put on first? I guess protection one, just because we enchanted it first. So now I'm off to see what I want to do this episode. Does this thing still work? It does not work. It does not work at all. Yeah, apparently one of the updates broke this thing. That's why I haven't worked on it at all. But, um, yeah. I'll we'll probably just have to replace it with something else. It'll probably be cheaper, whatever we replace it with, because that would be quite expensive. So, uh, I'm going to go figure out what we're going to do in this episode today, because I haven't figured that out yet, and then I will be right back. Okay, so this is actually a new day in real life, and I decided what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to work more on the wool farm. So as you can see over there, that's what we built in episode 14. It's the whole working wool farm for one sheep, <laughs> but we want 32 in our wool farm because we want two for each color. So over here, I have built it for six, which is about a fifth as the number we need. So this thing, realistically, would be five times as long and that would be a little too big. So I'm trying to plan it out here and once I get it planned out I'm hoping to be able to compact everything because this is pretty much a fully working wool farm but only for three colors, in this case red, white, and blue. Um, when I do it in my main world I will have it be for all 16 colors. But this is a fully working wool farm for three colors, so I feel like if I do these three colors in creative, then I can work on compacting it because I'll have every single redstone line I'll need in the full version, and then I can know for sure it's going to work even compacted. So that's what I'm doing here. So far I just have the uh, rail lines from each sheep going, and they all merge together here. The way I'm thinking of organizing the sheep is, like, if I press the white button here, it'll take a white sheep from that spot and a white sheep from that spot. And if I press the blue button, it'll take a blue sheep from that spot, a blue sheep from that spot. So it's not like that one and that one are white sheep. It's that one and that one are white sheep. So they'll be on opposite sides, and I think that makes it easier. I'm not really sure, but I think it'll make it easier because then I don't have to work on connecting these two tracks. So, yeah, that's what I have so far. I'm going to go ahead and make all the block update detectors, these things, like you just saw activate on all six of these, and then we can go on from there. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added all the block update detectors so we know when the grass turns grass or dirt under here when the sheep eats it or it regrows. 
Uh, I also went ahead and added a line for the white wool. So you can see this goes from the white wool button to the left and to the right, to so the far left and right tracks. Uh, if we go over here, they're identical on both sides, but if we go over here, the pulse goes to the track, makes the sheep move, because the sheep will be right here, then this will light up and the sheep will go down to our area over there where we can shear him. And then the rest of the pulse goes over here to this redstone setup, which is just a pulse lengthener extender, pulse extender. And that goes to an AND gate, which basically says if there's a block update, because, well, I guess the reason for the AND gate is because when I press the button over there, actually the white wool button, so the one over there, uh, it sends a block update to this, which I don't want to use that block update because it's not changing between grass and dirt. Instead, it's the rail turning on. So I'm saying if I'm pushing the button and there's a block update, then don't do anything. So now this only pulses when it changes between grass and dirt. So we have that much working. It's working on both uh, this side and the other side for the white wool. Uh, I'm not going to do the other four tracks yet. I'm going to get the white wool done and working perfectly because I feel like that would be the easiest thing to do. So yeah, next up would be adding this uh, T flip flop and then adding a rising edge detector so I can detect when it becomes dirt. Because when, when it becomes dirt, I want to say, okay, the sheep ate it, so we're good to go. The sheep is ready. And then this will light up, except over there, instead of it lighting up, it will check to make sure both this sheep and that white sheep are ready before this glowstone lamp will light up. So both sheep have to be ready for this to light up, whereas in our work over there, only the one sheep had to be ready for it to light up. So I'm going to go ahead and probably actually finish the white wool, just like we have it over here, so it'll be working that much. None of the track I will do yet. I'm going to do that mostly on camera, because that is completely new. This you all have seen before in, in the work I did over there, because it's, it's exactly the same, pretty much. What I'm trying to make different is... Um, this needs to be narrower, because <laughs> obviously this is this is six wide, six tracks wide. I'm going to have to have 32 of these. That's going to go too far. The redstone might not even work because it's out of range, possibly. So I need to make these as narrow as possible, which is what I'm trying to do. And I think I'm doing a good job with that. I think I am. I don't know <laughs> for sure. I'm sure if you took somebody who can compact redstone better than I can, he would be able to do a much better job but I'm doing the best I can do. And again, this is just a large scale demonstration for practice, I guess. And then when we build it in our main world, we will try to make it as small as possible. So have all these tracks next to each other or as close as next to each other as we can get them. So I'm going to be back when I have finished both the white wool, all the redstone for them, just like we have over there. And then we can probably start working on the tracks. I would say we can. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished all the redstone for each of the sheeps individually, but I haven't done anything that connects them together and makes them actually work as if they were one sheep. So I have everything that is in this, basically. So nothing, really, nothing with the tracks, nothing with the... Uh, the indicator lights, nothing... Yeah, I guess that's really it. That's all that's left. Tracks and indicator lights, so... That's next. I've actually tested both of the sheeps individually. The ready indicator works just as it should. So next step would be to connect the ready indicators and say, if they're both ready, then... then turn on the indicator light. So I'm going to do that part on camera because... Well, it's new, so you guys haven't seen that before. So let's go ahead, and I think what we want to do is basically just have this redstone line and the redstone line over there from that sheep come together close to the button here. It's right here. Uh, right here, approximately, but in the sky, and then 
there's be a long redstone line going all the way to the light. I think that's the simplest idea, and I think it'll work just as we want it to. So maybe I actually shouldn't do this on camera. <laughs> this is just going to be boring. It's going to be me stringing redstone. Uh, so yeah, I'll be right back instead of doing this on camera. That'll just be boring for you guys. Well, that was pretty easy. All I did, as I explained earlier, is take the memory cell circle that indicates whether or not the sheep is ready. He has his bull and all. And I strung redstone from there, from both of the sheep. So one from that side, one from that side. And then and there's a little AND gate that indicates if they are both ready, then turn on this redstone and go all the way over to the indicator light. So it's currently on, which means that color sheep, the white color sheep, is ready to be harvested, so I could press the button and all, but then I have to wait for it to reset itself and all, and I don't want to do that. You guys don't know what I mean, but I don't really feel like dealing with it. <laughs> so I'm not going to press the button right now. Uh, the next step would be getting the tracks ready. There is one kind of downside I noticed. It's that I used the outermost track <laughs> for my starting, so that fact means I don't really have to do anything with this track right here. I only have to deal with this track and this track. So the idea I have for the tracks, I think, is to have a memory cell circle under here, or an RS NOR latch, as some people have told me it is called. Which I do know that's what it's called, I just don't call it that because this is Minecraft and not computer craft. Isn't computer craft a mod? I think it is with all the turtles and stuff. It's in Feed the Beast. Um, so anyways, I think the best solution would be to have a memory cell circle, a memory cell circle in here, and that'll indicate whether or not the track should go, uh, well, it'll be, either, it'll, be, it'll be either off or on, and that'll determine which way the track goes. So, huh. Both on and off, this track goes the same direction, really. <laughs> Where's a lever? Maybe that'll do a better job. Yeah, here we go. A lever worked much better. Okay. So it'll either go left or right if you're facing this way. So when I press the white wool button, I want... Or when I press the white wool button, there's a signal sent across here to each of the two sheep. So when I press the button, I also want the signal to go over here and tell the memory cell circle, hey, turn on or off. And uh, in this case, it would want it to turn off. Yes, in this case, it would want it to turn off so that when the sheep comes through the minecart track, it just goes straight. So it'll tell this piece of track, hey, turn off. And so the track will turn off. And then when I press that button back over there, that starts the complicated part, because if I just send the sheep back, it'll go into this spot instead, which is not where I want it to go. Instead, I want it to go straight. So I don't really know how I'm going to handle that part yet, as because I need this to be on when the sheep comes back for the white wool. So I'm thinking I need some sort of indicator that tells me which button was last pressed. So in this case, if I press the white button, there will be some kind of indicator that tells me, hey, I, the, the, hey, the white button was the last one pressed. So when I press the button in the middle here to send the sheep back, the track needs to be set so that it'll, so that the sheep will go all the way back to its white spot where it belongs. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind of indicator to use. That's the issue I'm having. So I have to think about that, and I will be right back once I have an answer for that, and then we can start building the track stuff, which will be completely new because we haven't done any of that yet. Okay, I'm back. I'm still thinking about what I want to do for the track issue, but I decided to actually show you how this thing is working, because otherwise, what are you guys getting out of the video, right? I mean, other than redstone lessons and tons of it. <laughs> So let's go ahead and press the white wool button, and we'll bring both of the white sheep here. 
So you can see there's that one coming from over there, and there's that one coming from over there. And this won't take as long for them to get here when this thing is done. Did you just eat the grass under there? Okay, wow. Uh, this won't take as long for the sheep to get here when this thing is finished in my survival world, because... because I'll have it on a much smaller scale. I won't need this much space per track. So the sheep are here. We press the white bull button to get them here. Uh, pretend we sheared them. It doesn't matter if you shear them or not. And then we want to send them back. So we press this button, and both of the sheep go back. And in this case, they'll both go back to their correct spots because... Ah, enter. Because their track only goes there. It doesn't go anywhere else. So now both the sheep are back in their spots. I'm just going to look at this one, for example. So now this redstone line is on because the sheep is back here. And then once uh, this line right here that I'm looking at turns off and then back on because we want it to turn to dirt, uh, that means the sheep ate it and he regrew his wool, then the sheep will be set to ready within all this redstone, which I could explain, but I'm not going to because this is simpler. And then when both, once both sheep are ready, it goes to the indicator, tells us they're ready. So that's all good to go. There are some more features I want to add to this, such as if I press the white wool button and the sheep are not ready, then don't do anything. Just ignore the press. I do want to add that feature, but that'll be something we add later. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the whole thing in action. And if I were to press the red button, if I had it hooked up, it would bring red sheep over here, and then I could press the same button to send them back. So that's that's the whole idea behind this. So now I'll be back once I have figured out the track issue because I'm still not sure how I want to handle sending the sheep back with the same button. Because having the track turned a certain way makes issues. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've made a bit of progress since I last saw you. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of redstone in front of the building now. And the reason for that is this is all supposed to be underground, but I can't go underground and do redstone because of the simple fact that this world is three high. <laughs> that was my mistake when I made the world. Actually, it wasn't a mistake when I made the world. When I made this world, there were no customizations for super flat worlds. Now there are, and I really should make a new one, but I just haven't yet. So in the meantime, we're going to have redstone in front of the building. So the redstone I've added basically says... Uh, let's go with this. This is a memory cell circle, and right now it's turned on. That's the output line right there. And it's saying, hey, let's turn on this rail right here so it'll turn at this corner this way. Um, and I basically have one for each and every curve option in the rail lines. So there's one there, one there, one there, and one there. So... Yeah, that's most of the redstone that you're seeing right now. The other part is... Uh, let's go look at this one. If this is turned on, that means the white wool was the button that was last pressed. And I think this is the kind of indicator I want to use for it. So when I press the white button, it sends a signal all the way over here. And it turns on this one, which turns off this one, which turns on this one and says, Hey, white wool was last pressed. And then if you go press the red wool after that, the red wool will be the last one pressed. So now, I need to add some more functionality to these memory cell circles. So, I think when I press the button to send the animal back, I need to get redstone coming out of here again. This would be underground, not right here. This is just for testing right now. So when I press the button, there's a pulse sent here, and I want to say, if the button is pressed, and white was the last button pressed, then go do things with each track, whether turning them off or on, whichever one it needs to be. So let's get the button signal out here, all the way out here. There we go. And that's probably way more than 15. One, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the next one will be 6, okay. So now we can have a whole bunch of AND gates. Let's start with the white wool just because that's what we're doing. 9. Okay. So put an AND gate here. This chicken really likes the AND gate, I guess. So now if the button is pressed and the white wool was the last one pressed, then this will send a signal and we want it to tell... Um, let's see, what do we want it to tell? We want this track to be turned on. It is currently on, but we still have to tell it to turn on because we don't know if it will be on when we press the button in a normal circumstance. So I need to turn this one on, which means I need to power this side. So let's do this up in the sky, because I'm pretty much taking up all the ground space I can. So this will turn on... Yes. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we just place redstone. Uh, oops, wrong way. <laughs> I was wondering why that turned on. It wasn't supposed to turn on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so let's send this signal up as well. I can just do it on the side of the redstone. And that's the same height, okay. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Um okay then. Let's just place a repeater right here. We'll have two repeaters really close to each other, that's fine. So there we go. Um, yeah, we want to turn this track on, so that's good. We now turn this track on when the middle button is pressed and the white button was the last wool color selected. So now what do we want to do with this track? It's probably going to be turned it on as well. Yeah, we want to turn it on so the sheep will go straight to the right. So this is pretty much going to be the exact same thing, really. That makes it nice and easy. Uh, how did I do that? Okay. That's the right height? Yeah. Okay. How far do I need to go? Just one more block, that was it. Okay, <laughs> that's nice and easy. Um, there we go. And we want the same redstone signal to go over there. So let's... We'll just send it all the way and we'll put repeaters in as we need to rather than counting. Because going this direction, we can actually do that. We don't have to count. Going the other direction, we did have to count. Otherwise, I would not have counted. <laughs> okay. So where do we need repeaters? Right here. Right here. And just in case, I'm going to put one... Oh. Right there. I needed one anyways. Okay. So now that'll turn this track on, and when we press the same button there in the 
white one was the last one pressed, we want to turn this track off. Because otherwise it'll go up into that slot when it's coming back, the shape that is. Instead of we want to go straight to the left. So we want to turn this track off, which means we want to power this side. And I think it's the same for this one as well. Off? Yeah, we want to turn this one off. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and then I will be right back. Okay, I finished up the return button redstone, I guess. So now when you press the button, it checks what the last uh, button pressed was. In this case, it only checks the white wool. I haven't hooked up the red and blue wool yet. Um, so if the white wool was the last one pressed, then it goes on this horizontal line right here to all four intersections on the railroad track. So let's start with the rightmost. Uh, over here, it goes all the way to the memory cell circle for the track and says, turn it on. So it'll be turned on and the wool, or the sheep, not the wool, will go across just straight like that and be good to go. And it does that for all four intersections. I'm not gonna show you all four. The next step would be to, um, my mind just went blank. Oh yeah, hook up the white wool button so that when you press it, uh, it changes the track as well, because currently it doesn't change the track at all. It just currently goes along this line and says, hey, the white wool was the last one pressed. So that's all it does right now. It doesn't actually change anything on the track. So what we need to do is make it change stuff on the track. <laughs> so I guess we need to change the memory cell circle on the track with the button. So let's start with this one just because it's right next to it. We want to, when we get a pulse on here, send power to that redstone piece. And this is not going to work. It needs a repeater in it. Oop. OK, there we go. So now that track is set up. It'll this piece will turn on when I press the button, and it'll go around here. This will turn on. As a result, this piece will turn off, and the track will turn off, which means it'll be curving that way. Because as you can see, the redstone is off right now, because I happened to break it, not because the redstone is working correctly. So when I press the white wool button, the shape will come, and... This is currently off, so it'll come just straight, and it'll go into our spot, the correct spot over there, which is exactly what we want to happen. So that is hooked up correctly, assuming it works. I haven't tested it yet, obviously. So I need to do that for all four tracks. Let's go ahead and make this one, or rather this one, this is a track, do the same thing. I'm going to have so many bridged wires over here. I guess I need to go even higher than this to get over it and then end up right next to this redstone piece. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera though. And then I'll be right back. Spinning egg! I forgot the item spin. I've been doing this so much in creative. Wow. So yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, we're making huge progress. I think I have it fully working. The white wool Fully working. I think I do. So let's actually just test it out now. Is it dark? No, the sun's in the mid-sky. It just feels dark. Okay. <laughs> so let's press the white wool button. And actually, let's check. Can the shape with the tracks currently the way they are reach me? They cannot reach me here. So that, no. And not here, so no. He can't reach me at all. How about this one? Now he can't reach me, and now he can't reach me. Perfect. So when we press the white wool button, it'll be a full test, and we will know if it's working. So now let's look. Both the sheep are coming. One that's not appearing. Good, good. Yes, both sheep came, even though one is invisible. He's actually in there. He's just invisible. If I go over here, I can't whack him. Ah, get up there. There we go. So yeah, I can't whack him. I don't want to accidentally break the track down there, but I can't whack him, so he's invisible in the cart. So our white wool button is working. So now we shear the sheep, 
and we want to send them back. So let's press the send them back button and see if they both reach where they're supposed to be going. Good, 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 good. Yes, it's fully working. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Okay, so both sheep are back, and these things are fully working. I've tested them multiple times. Both the sheep are back in their spots, I believe. Yes, both minecarts are there, so awesome. All that redstone in the front is working now as well. So the next steps really would be to hook up the red and blue buttons. But I have so much redstone here already, and all this redstone that you're seeing would be underground, so I can take up as much room as I want. I don't need any to... I don't really need to compact it. I might spend time thinking of ways to compact it, but I'm not going to do it in this episode, because then the episode would be way too long. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if that's it for this episode, and we can start working on stuff next episode, possibly putting this in my survival world, depending on if I feel like getting a headache that day. Um... I do need to figure out how to make this not so wide. Currently it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide. And that is just too wide. Nine times thirty-two is twenty-seven, eighteen, two ninety no, two eighty-eight? Two ninety-eight, two eighty-eight, and something close to three hundred blocks wide. That is far out of range <laughs> of chunks loaded. I think they load like 144 blocks in a certain direction. So currently this thing, as wide as it is, won't work because of the simple fact that the redstone be so far away it would not be loaded. I also don't have enough blocks or redstone to build something that big. So this will definitely have to be shrunk down. This thing is too wide right now, and then you also have to include the fact that you need a space right in between um, like between this redstone and the start of the next one over. So there has to be an empty space right here in this row. And that makes it essentially 11 wide, or actually 10 wide per thing, because you need a wall on both sides, but they each share a wall. So it's essentially 10 times 32. So 320 blocks wide is how wide this thing would be. Way too wide. <laughs> way too wide. That would be unloaded in redstone. The chunks would be unloaded. So I'm going to have to work on making this narrower and also probably work on making this smaller because this is only one uh, one sixteenth of the total redstone I'm going to have to have underground because this is redstone for just one color wool, but there's 16 colors, so yeah, that's going to be a lot of redstone. I'm probably going to have to make this smaller as well, but I'm going to do all that off camera because that's just mainly sitting back and thinking, hmm, how could I change this to make it smaller? And I don't really change anything functionality-wise. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode. It was another creative world episode rather than survival world, but it's still part of my Let's Play, and we're working on stuff that'll be going into my survival world. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Uh, before I go, if you have any tips for how to make this thing narrower, this is the biggest issue right here. If you know how to make it narrower, uh, let me know, because, well, mm, I guess if you can recognize anything in this and give me tips on how to make it narrower, you can. I'm probably not going to get anybody telling me how to make this narrower because it just looks like a whole mess of redstone, quite honestly. Uh, so yeah, I need to end the episode. Quit rambling. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.